This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. Welcome to the Bobby the Today Evening Update for Tuesday, May 26. I'm Fernella Wedderburner. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news this evening, a Labour Minister, Dr. Esther Bayer, has been asked to intervene in the impasse between the Barbados Workers' Union and the Barbados Light and Power Company. The two sides met today for a second round of talks with the Chief Labour Officer, Vincent Burnett, over what has been described as the unilateral retrenchment of 73 BLMP workers, as well as other issues. The two sides failed to meet consensus on the matters on the table after four hours of talks at the Labour Office in Warren. The parties have been met at the level of the Chief Labour Officer on Friday and again today have been unable to reach agreement on a position which we believe to be fundamental to the talks and necessary for taking us forward. The company would wish to have the BWU not treat to the further contemplated reductions within the context of further reduction, noting that 73 employees were dismissed, mainly attributable to the fact that the company, without appropriate consultation, created an environment that led those employees to believe that labor costs were going to be cut by some 20% and offered them a time frame within which they should give an indication and within which those dismissals would take place. BLMP's Human Resources Manager, Roger Baburam, says they are now waiting on a Minister Bayer to set a date for the talks. Our consultation continued today at the office of the CLO. Um, that make as much progress as we thought we would have. And at the end of the meeting, further discussions were deferred to the Minister of Labour. So we'll be meeting in short time um, to be chaired by the Minister and the CLO as well. So that's where the discussions are heading. Any day set? No, uh, we are the mercy of the minister and who should you. So we are waiting here with from him. Meantime, private haulers and environment minister Dr. Dennis Lowe are yet to reach a resolution on the controversial $25 tipping fee. Our Emmanuel Joseph has the details on that impasse. The waste movers and haulers group say they are willing to hold train for government to implement a new credit facility that avoids them having to pay the tipping fee up front. A source told Barbados today the facility was supposed to have been in place already following a meeting with Environment Minister Dr. Dennis Lowe last Monday. However, spokesman for the Waste Movers and Haulers Group, Charles Reese, says they acknowledge that a workable solution takes time. Reed said that in the meantime, the waste truckers have put their work stoppage on pause and are back on the job pending further word from government on the solution. The waste haulers and movers had been insisting that government must dump the contentious $25 per ton tipping fee for the disposal of waste at the Sustainable Barbados Recycling Centre at Vault Clues in St. Thomas. At the weekend, Prime Minister Frandes Stewart insisted that the tipping fee stays put. Over the weekend also, the group issued a statement noting that after their meeting with Minister Lowe, additional information was requested. It said the first set of information was submitted last Wednesday and the final document on Friday. The waste movers and haulers were expected to resume talks today with the Ministry as both sides moved towards a workable solution. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. In other news, commercial banks operating in the country are in line for some tough competition from the government. Today, the central bank governor, Dr. Delisle Worrell, urged nationals to invest with the country's top financial institution during this morning's launch of a series of saving bonds to the tune of $10 million. Dr. Worrell says those wishing to acquire this means of savings can get up to $100,000 in bonds. What we want to, do, to, to, to ensure is that the public is aware of the range of institutions. You know, uh, 
the financial market, like all our markets, are intended to be competitive. So it is a competitive a competition. Banks are aware of that, just as credit unions are a It is all about a real Police officer Yundwin Jabatis has been remanded to prison on gun and ammunition charges. The 29-year-old officer appeared before Magistrate Alliston Seal today, charged with the possession of an unlicensed firearm and nine rounds of ammunition. He was not required to plead to either of the charges. He will return to the District A court on June 20. The use of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones in the country is causing serious security, safety and privacy concerns for authorities. And the Civil Aviation Director, Kingsley Nelson, has served a notice that officials are keeping a close eye on the situation as such devices become more available. He says the guidelines for importing and using these devices, also known as remotely piloted aircraft systems, are also currently under review by the relevant authorities as a number of government agencies examine the issues posed by these vehicles. In sports, the world's fastest man does it again. Jamaican sprint sensation Usain Bolt today won the 200 meters race at the 54th of Strava Golden Spikes meet in the Czech Republic. He finished in a time of 20.13 ahead of his American and Greece competitors who came in second and third respectively. There's regional and international news after this short break. Farley Hill, Crane Beach, fried chicken at Pugs Bar. All parts of Barbadian life that some might know, but others don't. So join me, Katrina Marshall, as I go about town and across country, peeking into tucked away districts and liming with the people who bring them to life. About town and across country, coming soon to Barbados Today, news you can trust. Originally now, a 51-year-old man in Dominica was today sentenced to 35 years behind bars for sexually abusing a 9-year-old girl. Figon Joe No Hope was sentenced to 25 years for unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor, 25 years for the charge of buggery, and 10 years for indecent assault. The court was told that the accused gave the 9-year-old money, and when she refused, he pulled a knife on her. The man, who was convicted of murder in 1989, incest in 2011, and battery in 2012, has been described as a threat to society, especially to the nation's children. And finally, in Malaysia, authorities have revealed that 139 graves discovered close to the Thai border are related to human trafficking. Officials believe gangs involved in the illegal trade held the migrants for ransom in the jungle camp. And on that note, we come to the end of our evening updates, but we'll be back again tomorrow morning. Until then, remember, you can log on to www.barbudistoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on iZubi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We're also on Channel 101 on 9TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn, and do have a wonderful day. This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here.